Well, like our little welcoming video said, we're going to start working with depth of field. In this first week, we're going to deal with the traditional depth of field as it's controlled by mostly by camera controls. For some of you, this may be a review. I hope so. For others, you may be hearing this for the first time, but this is critically important for you. So please pay pretty close attention. Number one, there's going to be a question or two on it a little later, but number two, it's really important for your mastery of your camera gear and your technique to produce the kind of shots you want. So let's start off going, what is depth of field? How are we going to define it? Depth of field is the, is the area from in front of the subject to behind the subject that appears, and the operative word here is that appears to be in focus in the final image, whether it's a photographic print or it's your file, whatever it is. It's that area that looks like it's sharp. And here's an example of what we're talking about. On the far left is the camera and the image plane, sometimes just referred to as the camera plane. You can see that line across the top, right square through the middle of the little teddy bear, is our point of critical focus, the distance from the image plane to the point of critical focus is called the focal distance. Sometimes people just call it the camera to subject distance. But in that area around the bear, you can see that there's an area from in front of the bear at about the squirrel's tail to somewhere in the middle of the tree. And that area is going to look like it's in focus in the final image. That area is what we call the depth of field. Anything closer to the camera than that squirrel's tail is going to be out of focus. Anything farther from the camera than the middle of that tree is going to be out of focus. Depth of field actually is simply an illusion, but it's made possible, interestingly enough, because of a limitation in human vision. Most humans simply can't resolve details smaller than one two hundredth of an inch. Oh, there are some that can see a little better, some that can't quite see that. But on average, most of us can only resolve down to about a two hundredth of an inch, and then things start to blend together for us. Every light ray that's reflecting off of a subject comes back through the lens and projects on the image plane as a small circle. Whether that image plane is film or chip, it works exactly the same. The more focused the area from which that light ray comes, the smaller the projected circle becomes. If light rays from some area on the subject out in the real world are projected on the image plane as smaller than a two hundredth of an inch, that area will appear sharp to our eyes. If light rays from another area, let's say that are farther away or closer, are larger than a two hundredth of an inch, then they're going to look like they're out of focus. They'll be soft on the final print. The larger the circle, the more out of focus that area will appear. And we'll illustrate this in a few more slides. But what's critical for you to understand, immediately as the point of focus moves away from that plane of critical focus, the projected image circles start to get bigger. But it's not until they reach that magic number of one two hundredth of an inch that we suddenly start to see things as out of focus. So as long as they're smaller than that, we see them as focused. Those circles that are projected on the image plane are called circles of confusion. Depth of field is controlled or influenced by a number of things in the camera. The first is the aperture, the f-stop, how we're going to set the lens. The second is the magnification of the subject, meaning how big is that subject in the image plane? And we can control that by either the focal length of the lens or the focal distance, the camera to subject distance. Both of those affect magnification. Both of them affect depth of field. 
So let's take a look at them um, in order. First of all, let's look at the aperture issue. Adjusting the aperture alters the angles of the incoming light rays reflecting off of the subject. The narrower those angles, then the more in focus that part of the image is. As the aperture is made smaller, those angles are more constrained and more of them start falling under that magic one two hundredth of an inch limitation. And here's an illustration to show how it works. On the top is a lens wide open at f4. Over on the left side you can see that blue dashed line is our plane of critical focus. That's what the lens is focused on. And you can see the red lines are focused right on that point. The green lines emanate from light that's behind that. They go through the lens, they fall on the image plane over on the right. The red focused light rays are still just a dot, but the green goes on through and projects a circle, a bigger circle on the film plane or the image plane. If that circle is bigger than a two hundredth of an inch on the final print, then it's going to look like it's out of focus. Meantime, we stop the lens down to f16. Same point of focus, same everything, except now the light is coming through a narrower path. The focused part, the red beam, is still just a point on the film plane. But the green, that part from some thing behind the point of focus, now hits the film plane as a smaller circle. If it's smaller than a two hundredth of an inch, it will look like it's in focus. Depth of field is also influenced by the lens focal length. And here the rule is fairly straightforward. The longer the focal length, the shallower the depth of field. Conversely, the shorter the focal length, the greater the depth of field. And here's an example to make sense of that. A 200 millimeter lens is going to show a shallower depth of field than a 100 millimeter lens, everything else being equal. Same focal distance, same aperture setting. But a 28 millimeter lens will show greater depth of field than a 50 millimeter lens. Again, everything remaining the same. Our depth of field is also influenced by the focal distance, the distance from the image plane to the plane of focus, or sometimes just the camera to subject distance. Here the rule is, the greater the distance, the greater the depth of field. The shorter the distance, the less the depth of field. And that's simply because the greater the distance, the smaller things are in the camera. The shorter the distance, the closer you are, the bigger they are. So for example, a subject that's 100 feet from the camera will have more depth of field than a subject that's 50 feet from the camera, all other things being equal, the aperture and the focal length of the lens. Meantime, a subject that's 5 feet from the camera will have less depth of field than a subject 10 feet from the camera. Why? Because it's bigger. There's more magnification to it. So if we know what depth of field is, that area that appears sharp, and how to control it with these three controls, so what? What do we care about that? Well, let's ask it another way. What does depth of field as a technique do to help you tell your story about your subject? I'm so glad you asked that. Because if you hadn't, we wouldn't have any reason to go on to the next presentation. So stick around, because in the next little presentation, we'll show you what depth of field can do for your images and how it can help you to tell your story.